Sutton with Jay Up and James Up. Hello, boys. What's up, guys? Whoa, whoa. We are back again doing some more rookie profiles here. We're going to move on to a little running back, a little guy named Nick Chubb. I didn't call him little two times already. Not so, not so little. Yeah, it's not that He's exactly. basically our height. Comes in about 5'10". Oh, I, I, I tower over that. What are you, 5'11 and a half? Wow. You're not six foot, are you? Yeah. Are you really? Uh, I'm in between Damn. six and six one. I must, I must be six five then, Travis. You're. you're <laughs> is that what they list you at, or or do you actually get? Every time I've ever been measured. Bro. <laughs> wow. On the field, or you know why? Because you used to have that mullet that was kind of puffy. No, that was uh, party in the back. It wasn't. It was business. Uh, it was a little puffy, no, I guess. It was business in the front. <laughs> yeah, puff, puff business. Uh, but Chubb, five foot ten, like we said, but he's two hundred twenty-eight pounds, which is um, actually pretty decent size for a running back, I think. I mean, you have the bigger backs that are like the two forties and two fifties. Smaller backside would be like between two hundred and two ten. So he's like right in the middle of two forty, two fifty. You're you're when? on the verge of fullback. Uh, uh, there's a few guys with that good size, but not many. I think like Mike Tolbert size. I think his like Garrett Blunt. His yeah, but how many other guys? And what is he really other than Leonard Fournette? He's probably no. two thirty-five. And it's like 225, 228 ish. Yeah. He's not quite 240, 250. I'm just saying that right around 230 ish. I mean, his height and his weight is almost like that's like perfect. That's kind of what you, for me anyway. I like that kind of size weight combo. Uh, he's only 21, so he's a good age, a young guy coming out. 22. Uh, okay, then I have a little bit of old information. He, he just turned 22 December 27th. That's why. Um, a couple weeks out. Yeah, absolutely. Just turned 1995. Uh, I actually, uh, from Cedartown, Georgia, went to college in Georgia, went to high school in Georgia. So he's uh, a Georgia guy. Atlanta Falcons? I mean, you might <laughs> love that. Well, they don't need a running back there, do they? They might if uh, Tevin Coleman's a free agent. If they let him walk, he's, Tevin Coleman's going to want big money. So if they let him walk, they can bring him in behind Devontae Freeman, let him learn a little bit. I like that. He was a two-star sport athlete uh, in college as well, football and track. So he's got the speed. I like that. He's got the size. You know, so I like that. Uh, he, I also had uh, that I found that uh, his birthday, since we're going to stay on the birthday thing, kind of thought it was interesting. His birthday is that he shares Bill Goldberg, the wrestler, okay. Cesaro, also a wrestler, China, Triple H's ex-wife, also a wrestler, and Jamal Charles. Say the same birthday as all So of them. three wrestlers and a running back. Three wrestlers and a running back. That's pretty, pretty good pedigree. Good company. He was almost a wrestler, it appears. They're, yeah, all, was, they're all huge. He could have right? went either way. Yeah, the smallest one out of that is Jamal Charles, and he's a uh, you know, pretty decent size. Which guy. is pretty sad, because that means China's bigger than Jamal Charles. China, yeah, destroys all these guys. Or was, I should say. Yikes. You going to bring up a death? Well, she's, she's dead. Okay. She just died in 2017. Strawberries. Rest her soul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like uh, Nick Chubb. I think he fits the young and aggressive profile that we like so much. Yeah. I mean, bulldog. He does. He's a four-star recruit coming out. He uh, his senior. He he played all the way through his senior year, though. So right. Yes. He's a senior coming out right now, correct? Yeah. Uh, well, he missed kind of that year with the injury, though, as well. I mean. That's that's, and I think that's the big knock on him. I think that if he doesn't miss his, uh, was it his, uh, was it his sophomore year? If I he believes, I believe his so. sophomore year he got hurt. Yes. Yeah. If he doesn't miss his sophomore year, I think that you're talking about him in the same breath as as a Saquon Barkley, a little bit behind Saquon Barkley. Yeah. I think that I think that's the big knock on him is is that that knee injury and it was an ACL, but just like his his Georgia teammate uh, when he was a freshman, Todd Gurley, he tore his ACL and he seemed to have bounced back, you know, fine. And when he uh, when he got the chance to take over the job after Gurley left, he was tearing it up and then he tore up his knee. Uh, so, but he was on pace to have a killer season. I, I think it would be, yeah, I think it would be a completely different narrative if he hadn't gotten that major knee injury. I think he would be right up there as a first round draft pick in the NFL draft. And he would be looked at just barely a little bit behind Saquon Barkley. I'm a little concerned about his, uh, the mileage on his legs already. He's 22 years old. Usually I don't really put any weight into this kind of thing, but I was looking up his high school stats. And in high school, he rushed for 7,000 yards and 102 touchdowns. So, I mean, it seemed to me like if you break that down into four years, that he was the only show in town, and he was probably carrying the ball a ridiculous amount of times. Then he comes into college, uh, gets, like you said, had to come in right away as a freshman because Gurley got hurt. So he basically played four years except for the year that he got hurt. Uh, he, he played five games that year as well, though. So he's got a lot of mileage, eight years on his legs already of basically being the man to get the ball. And now he's coming in as a 22-year-old uh, with a lot of 
mileage, a lot of hits on his knees, a lot of hits on his ankles with already the one ACL injury. Are you any kind of concerned at all about maybe that affecting him a year or two uh, years down the road when he starts getting the NFL get hit more again? Or you just don't put any weight into the injuries? I I think, in in my opinion, I'm not going to speak for Travis here, but in my opinion, I think that he's the type of guy that maybe shouldn't be getting, you know, 20 to 25 carries a game. Like, I think that if he was uh, in a situation like Mark Ingram is in in New Orleans, to where he's like the big physical back, he's the guy that's going to close out the fourth quarter, but he also has like a compliment back there with him, I think that would be best suited for Chubb. Like, if he has to come in and he has to carry the load, that is a lot of wear and tear on a body, and I think that he could sustain it, sustain it for a little while, but I don't think over the course of a career that he could do it for that long. What do you think about the injury thing, Travis? I know you love injuries. Uh, well, he's he did fine this year. I mean, he came back and showed that he's he looks pretty much like he kind of did before the injury, so he's, he's gotten a lot of that back. He looks explosive. Um, as far as, I mean, I'm just speculating here, but in college or in high school, I, I could – tell a story that he was probably a man among boys, so to speak, and he was probably, who knows how many times he really got hit, and who was he getting hit by, little dudes? You never know. Little uh, dudes? He little played dudes. high school. He yeah, played football in Georgia. School. In have Georgia? Seen, have you seen high school? High school kids, though. They're all shapes and sizes, but... Okay, but he's not playing high school in, in Las Vegas. Like he's, I mean, he's playing in Georgia, and Georgia is one of the top probably 10 states, easily, that like uh, football is just life. In Georgia, just like it is in Pennsylvania, like we said, in Texas, like we said, Florida, California as well. So I don't, I don't put, I, don't, I, don't, I seriously doubt he's just mowing over tiny little uh, we've midgets. Seen, we've seen a few clips here and there of guys in high school, and the ones that are really Getting good, at, that are doing like this kind of stuff, yeah, are trucking like a whole other team, are trying to tackle them, and they're just. They have no okay, maybe maybe he blossomed early. He was like a you know <laughs> when he was a freshman sophomore. Maybe I uh, I don't put too much weight into the injury myself. I mean it was a sophomore year, like we said. Mine's just wear and tear type of thing, I guess. I, I get it. And I think that might be a result from. It all just depends though on kind of where he goes. If he goes to an NFL team and they're expecting him to be like the only guy, then yeah, maybe I'm a little more leery of it. I want him in a situation kind of like he was at Georgia, where he was splitting time with Sony Michelle, and have that compliment back. I think that he would be. I think he would excel in that in that spot. I don't I don't really know who in the NFL drafts a back to be the only guy anymore. I right. Mean, I mean, you're going to go somewhere. Where, yeah, McKinnon's, or you have some kind of guy kind of back there. You're going Leonard Fournette. But I do think he. Uh, yeah, but he's, he's Zeke. A Zeke, a Zeke, a little more so. But uh, Leonard Fournette, he's got Yeldon. He's got. You know, there, there's there, 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 but he's Ivory getting. Was there. I mean, he he's getting ninety percent of the carries, though. Right, and ninety percent of the carries is a lot of first and second down. Mostly, you're still getting your twenty or twenty-five carries. Like, I think he can handle that. I think that's what he's built for, personally. For uh, Nick Chubb, you're saying? Yes, yes, I do too. Um, as far as his carries in college, he only played six games that year. He got hurt mm-hmm. and only had ninety-two two, uh, attempts. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he only had over two hundred attempts once, and he had two hundred seven. So. Uh, I don't know if he had... His that. senior year, though, he had 223. I think they're counting the bowl game online. But he had 223 attempts for 1,345 yards. Average six yards on the dot per carry. 15 touchdowns. Yeah, mine is just through the 12 games. Mm-hmm. It was uh, 178. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't put a whole lot into that. I think he's... I think he's primed to be good. I think what really is going to be the deciding factor is if his medical for the draft or the combine... Right comes back and Correct. some kind of one of the positive flags. a positive on that uh, note is that I keep reading that he's uh, very big into working out weightlifting squatting and doing like he's a constant gym rat off season during the season first one in last one out type of guy that's constantly doing the whole James Harrison thing where he does different types of workouts that uh, a lot of people don't try uh, some would say like awkward uh, you know different things of like uh, tire flipping and all kinds of stuff that like aren't like normal gym workouts I should say that he's just constantly working on his body so that uh, goes to show that when he did come back from his uh, ACL injury and his knee injury he bounced right back his junior and senior year and didn't have any issues after that so I do like that going forward because clearly he did all the rehabbing necessary and was right back in the gym doing what he should have been so that's a good note that he's not a lazy type that's just going to be like oh whatever I'll just bounce right back he actually works for it so I like that about him uh, the other thing I read too was um, his great grandfather <laughs> did you read this no his great grandfather was one of eight brothers who founded the city of Chubtown Georgia okay it was a colony of free African Americans who endured endured uh, through the American Civil War so his 
Chubtown? Yes. So Chubtown, Georgia, named after obviously Chubb, his last name, his great grandfather and a couple of his brothers started the town that is still there today for a colony of free African Americans who endured through the American Civil War. I thought that was kinda of interesting. That is kinda of cool to have a town named after your name. That's pretty badass. Chubtown. Like, Chubtown City. <laughs> Sut- Suttonville. What did your like, grandfather you do? Mm. Oh, he's not much. Chuck Town. He was probably a good bowler. Uptown. <laughs> uptown. Is it, he, was, he was an uptown girl. <laughs> so some of the some of the knocks on him, which obviously is stuff that, that can be fixed once you get to the NFL level, is uh, his development as a receiver and his development as a blocker. Um, I think that's something that he can work on, but I, I kind of look at him and view him as like a Marshawn Lynch type. Like he's not going to come out and just, you know, kill you in the first quarter, but as the game wears on, he's going to start wearing down defenses. And he can catch but he doesn't do a lot of catching. So he's, like I said, I, I, I kind of compare him to like a Marshawn Lynch type. This is what I don't understand. And every time we talk about somebody, we say this, uh, now I've noticed it almost every single rookie spotlight episode on the running backs. Every time we say, oh, this running back can catch. And then you look and it's like he had 10 catches or he had like 12 catches. And it's like, how do, how do these scouts know or how do these people that are watching the tapes know that he can catch or he's a good receiving back if he doesn't show it on the field? Like, where are you seeing that at? Are you just taking his word that he can catch the ball? I think it's mostly, like, if you look at size. Like, if you look at the guys that that catch the ball, running backs that catch the ball, especially, like, in the NFL, they're, like, the smaller guys that are quick. And he's not really looked at as, like, a smaller, quick back. He's looked at, like, a big bruiser. Okay. So they don't really throw the ball to them that much. Like, we talk about LeGarrette Blunt all the time that he can't catch. He gets, like, one or two a game if he's lucky. Yeah, I don't think he can catch LeGarrette Blunt. But so you also see him driving four or five. I said they, they can catch if they need them to, but it, I'm not know. saying it was your assessment of him. I'm just saying, like in general, they right. say when when somebody tells me the guy can catch or the guy's a good receiving back, and you go back and look at his four year stats, and he never had more than 15 catches ever. You're like, okay, how do you? I just don't think it's it, it's not I'll take in, your word for it's it. It's not <laughs> in Chubb's like best game plan. It's not like way the way he should be used. Like. If he has to be in there, like for a trick play, like he has to catch on third down, right. he can. Okay. But that's not be- that's not his best suited. Position, that's not his best attribute. Correct. Uh, I. What do you think, Travis? I, I mean, I'm tired of hearing about how guys can catch, and then you don't you, like you have nothing to show it. Like you're, what do you go back and look at? He had four catches. He had four catches this year. Um. Sometimes. Were they have, awesome? Sometimes <laughs> you have to pull your head out of the stat box. Um, no, I'm talking about highlights. You don't see any highlights because he didn't catch the ball either. Well, that would show up in the stat box if it was uh, the, the same thing, really. Uh, uh, highlights? The highlights in the stat box, yeah. If he was to get catches, they'd show up in the stat box. Well, I, what I'm saying is you're looking at the stat box and you're saying, this isn't here. How, how can you tell me he does this? I think it's more of where he's at and what they're doing. He went to a school, uh, had Gurley there, uh, who's a guy who could catch as well. He's a Gurley leaves. They got... Uh, uh, Sony Michelle's there. He's the guy that's doing some of the catching. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he came in, the, the Keith Marshall, I don't know how much he caught really, but there was other, there's a lot of talent going to those uh, big schools. So they're, they're deep. You're fighting for, you know, playing time or, or It could be or the scheme. It could be the playbook. Like, I get that. So, but I think that, like, like he comes with Fournette as well. It's like, everybody's like, oh, he didn't do catching, he didn't do catching. Well, LSU doesn't really do that with their running backs as well. But he can catch. You've seen it in stretches. I mean, he's probably not going to be a guy that you just feed a ton of balls to, but if he catches 30 passes in a year, that's pretty good for a guy that's really the bigger guy and he's getting the first and second down work. Like for, for Todd Gurley, how everyone said, yeah, he can catch when he comes out. If you look at Todd Gurley's career at Georgia, which was uh, overlapped with uh, Nick Chubb, in, in college, he had 16 catches, then he had 37, which was the only um, season that he actually played the entire season. And then the next season after that, he only played six games, and he had 12 catches again. So he had 65 catches in the career. It's like, okay, yeah, I can, I can I buy that narrative that Todd really can catch. But when somebody's catching four balls in a season, I just, it's hard for me to put uh, you know, weight into that. I got to see it first. Either way, he's going to be a great running back, I think, and I think he is a bruising back that can wear you down. And if he does get 20 uh, carries a game, as long as he stays healthy, I think that he is that type of guy that can uh, be the Marshawn Lynch closer when the, the winter comes and it's December uh, or November and you need a couple of wins and you need a ground and pound. I think he's perfect for that. I don't know if he is an every down back per se, but I definitely think that he could wear on the defense and is a great second half running back for sure. I, I agree with that. I, I think that if given the chance, he could be a good three down back. Who would you compare him to? Well, like I said, Marshawn Lynch, if you want like a younger guy, like a Derrick Henry type, um, I know you saw uh, Frank Gore. Frank I, saw, Gore. I yeah. saw Frank Gore because uh, his size. 
Chubb, uh, Nick Chubb is 5'10", 228, and you have Frank Gore is 5'9", 215. So an inch apart and maybe 10 pounds apart, uh, but the way they run, the way that he doesn't, like Frank Gore to me though is a little bit different because he doesn't do anything spectacular, whereas Nick Chubb is a little bit more of a playmaker in my opinion. If you get him out in open space, he'll burn you, whereas Frank Gore is not outrunning anybody. He never was that type. He was more of like a look for contact first and try to like run over you with the first half of his career. Now he's just getting older where he kind of goes down to first contact, and again, that's not Nick Chubb. So I'm talking Frank Gore in the prime of his career more than I am how Nick, uh, Frank Gore is now. Yeah, Gore never really wore you down in the defense. Correct. Either. Like he didn't. Well, he never got like 30 carries. When he was in San Francisco, he was really uh, he was good at you know uh, getting that first contact and keep going. Uh, but like I said, the last probably four years, he has not not been the same running back like that. Where would you like to see Chubb go NFL wise, Travis? Um, there's no real spot that I've really been looking at. Uh, I I don't put a whole lot of time into looking where I'd like to see a guy go. Because there's still so much that needs to happen. Free agency, all the coaching changes. I mean, I could say X, Y, and Z, but then the coaching situation changes, and then they bring in a free agent, and it's like, yeah, I don't want to see him go there anymore. How do, you, how do you feel about the Giants in the second round? They have an early second round pick. If they don't take Barkley or they don't take a running back in the first round, they decide to go a different route, but like quarterback to back up Eli Manning. Second round, they have, I think, the third pick of the second round, I believe. Uh, and you have the Giants, you have the Cleveland right before him, who I'm not worried about them taking anybody, but if you have the Giants, and now all of a sudden, instead of taking Barkley, they still get Nick Chubb in the second round, and they're able to get their future quarterback in the first round, I do like both. That's like a consolation yeah. prize. I would love to see him in the Giants. I would also love to see him in Oakland. I think that if he kind of comes in and takes over for uh, Marshawn Lynch, I think that would be a, a pretty good spot, especially with Gruden coming back as the coach. I think that they would have the, uh, I think they'd have a good formula there with Carr, Two good receivers, and you bring in Chubb, and they still have those guys in the back, like uh, Richard and, uh, and, and Washington, uh, Washington I, to catch. I did see one of the negatives against him as well was he's not the greatest blocker. They said that they would tend to uh, put Sony Michelle in the game when uh, it was a third down and long because uh, he was better with the pass blocking assignments. And so I did read that he just wasn't the greatest blocker, which we talked about before on other uh, episodes that that can always hinder you. If you're out there and you're running the ball well, but you can't block, you can't pass block, or you miss a couple of assignments, it can definitely you know hurt you in the um, and the snap count wise, and it uh, can affect your playing time. But again, if he can adjust, there's going to be plenty of time for him. Hopefully, he doesn't get into a spot where he's got to be the number one guy shoved right into the role, which I don't think he's going to be. Same thing as Indy. If Indy decides not to go Saquon Barkley with the number three pick, and they either go offensive line or they go like uh, Bradley Chubb, maybe from North Carolina State, they could always go Nick Chubb in the second round. Can they go Chubb all the way around? The, the, way around? the first two picks are Chubbs. Dub Chubb? Yeah. Yeah. Chubb. And then they could be the Chubb brothers. They could be everything. Yeah. Think of the marketing behind that. 